Hi guys, David here from Almost Daily Science. So today I'm checking out this article called Bug Battle Cries, Bees vs. Murder Hornets. And so we're going to find out what bees sound like when they scream for danger. And this article says, surprisingly similar to mammals. That sounds like an insult actually, like, oh you scream like a mammal. So the article says that Eastern or Asian honeybees, Apis serrana, appear to communicate certain messages, including hisses and stop signals. But these newly discovered sounds revealed today in the journal Royal Society Open Science by researchers at Wellesley College are unlike other sounds recorded among honeybees. They're a unique alarm signal that appears to warn their fellow bees of a giant hornet or Vespa soror attack. It says attacks by giant hornets in Asia can wipe out entire colonies, so an early warning system that allows the bees to defend themselves is crucial. The new sound which they've termed the anti-predator pipe is a distress signal so distinctive and familiar it gave lead researcher Heather Matilla the chills when she first heard it. She says that basically these pipes are very similar to mammalian alarm signals, so as a mammal hearing them, there's something that's instantly recognizable as communicating danger. It feels like a universal experience. Well, let's take a listen and see what it sounds like. <laughs> funny it it does sound like if you were going to make a like a cartoon of bees like the bee movie or something like that it sounds just like they're actually screaming like like with like human voices you know but just very very high pitched and with that buzzing sound as a background <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty upsetting. It does, like, it, it kind of puts you on edge when you're listening to it, I think. Especially that part right there, it kind of comes in like, at that one pitch. There. Yeah, those things, those murder hornets are nasty. They're just, they're just so huge. And um, apparently what they do is their preferred mode of attack is to... They just run up and decapitate other bees, which is, <laughs> I can understand why the bees are, are screaming. It says the, the pipes share traits in common with lots of mammalian alarm signals, so as a mammal hearing them, there's something instantly recognizable. And um, and what it is, so they kind of like broke, broke it down a little bit, but basically it's that these piping sounds are made at a frenetic pace and the signals are harsh and irregular, often shifting frequency abruptly, similarly to how alarm shrieks, fear screams, and panic calls among primate, primates, birds, and meerkats work. And I suppose that's also, you know, even why why um, police and ambulance alarms sound a certain way. They kind of like, boo, boo, like they do this like rapid, um, shifting of frequency and then the pace changes if you listen if you if you've listened to an alarm recently most of the times um like a like a car alarm or an ambulance alarm is it, it doesn't have the same rhythm throughout and i wonder if that's because they have found over time that it gets your attention more when there's sort of a, a change in frequency abruptly from from one pattern to another so when i was Watching this video, initially, I just felt like, wow, I feel like so bad for the bees. They're screaming in terror and the, the hornets are like running around and decapitating everybody. So it did make me feel a little bit better to, to know that at least the Asian honeybee can actually fight back. It's kind of sad because it, from, from my, what, what I've been reading, it looks like Asian honeybees essentially have, um, over time, have developed tactics, they've, they've evolved tactics that are pretty good at combating these murder hornets because they've co-evolved with them they've they've been in the same area but european honeybees don't have these tactics and um they just basically get massacred which is which is really upsetting um so the asian honeybees though at least have some pretty interesting things they do one is it says that they start taking defensive actions including spreading of animal dung around the colony entrance to repel the hornets and the other thing is they form kamikaze-esque bee balls to kill attacking hornets collectively. And so here's, uh, actually this is uh, Heather Matilla. This is the same researcher that discovered the bee screams. 
Makes sense, I guess she spends a lot of time around these species of bees. She found that the Asian honeybee would indeed forage for animal feces, as a local beekeeper had previously mentioned to a member of her research team. Interestingly, they occasionally collect fluids from animal waste, which can provide them with needed salts, but this is the first time they have been seen collecting solid pieces of dung, carrying it home with their mouth parts, and applying it to the entrance of their nests, called fecal spotting. We documented that hornets were less likely to land on entrances or chew their way into hives when there were more fecal spots around entrances. While further research is needed to determine exactly what properties of animal feces repel the hornets, the barrier the bees create is an effective defense against their attacks. So that's pretty interesting. That's one thing that the bees have in their arsenal is basically putting out insect repellent, which is kind of ironic. And just in case you're feeling bad for the hornets about that, let's just see. Here's, here's a hornet decapitating uh, a bee and slaughtering them. So apparently uh, murder hornets will sometimes invade bees nests and when they manage to they can they just kind of go through and just actually kill all of the bees and then they'll move into the beehive and after that they'll just spend their time eating the the pupae and um, just generally wrecking the place in nature of course it's it's not really like the hornets are the bad guys and the bees are the good guys it's it's kind of arbitrary i mean there's a couple reasons why the bees are the good guys in, 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 our, in our minds, perhaps because we're just, we just generally prefer to identify with um, the defender rather than the aggressor. Also, the fact is that we value honeybees because they give us honey. Um, but still, there's just something about it when you see <laughs> these murder hornets just like come in and start decapitating everywhere, everyone. It's just like something about it, like you identify this insect as evil and then and then the honeybees are good it's like a good versus evil thing um and i, and I recognize that it's silly but it's still kind of cathartic to see uh to see them actually defend themselves so i'm looking at this other video it says bees kill a giant hornet with heat in the search for autumnal food a scout hornet discovers yamaguchi's wild bees okay so here's a a murder hornet finding finding these guys bees and he's hanging out by the entrance. The honeybees fan an alarm pheromone through the air. This alerts the whole hive to the hornet's presence. So this video was made a while ago, so it says that the bees are are fanning an alarm pheromone. Um, but the other article we were looking at, it says that they actually make, uh, they do an alarm sound. So I don't know if it's obvious which is the, the key thing. Is it the, the fact that they're making a sound and then the bees are listening to that and taking note? Or is it that they're sort of like spreading a pheromone around, a scent around? Maybe it's a combination of the two. The scout smells the honey within. A prize this rich is worth scent marking. So he's scent marking. I guess he, maybe he's like getting the scent on himself, and then and then when he goes back to his nest, he's gonna bring all the other hornets with him, and but they're gonna just the try European to massacre bees, everything. These Japanese bees do not attack. Instead, they lure the scout inside. So that's interesting. It says that um, these the the Japanese bees, honey bees, don't attack. I think what happens with I've seen videos of it. It's like it's pretty gnarly. The European bees will basically all come out of the nest, like kind of like one by one, or they'll, they'll they'll funnel out to try to attack the hornet. But what will happen is the hornet will hang out near the entrance, and basically as the bees come out, it'll just like decapitate them as they come out. And it turns out not to be very effective. So this is really interesting because in this video, you see one of the bees is actually like acting as bait and is luring the hornet inside the nest. Oh, there he is. He's inside, boys. Get him. Still, the bees hang fire. Girls, actually. This music is then so funny. Then one is caught. It's the signal the others have been waiting for. So that's really interesting. The narrator says that um, one of them is caught, which is the signal that the others have been waiting for. So I don't know if there's actually have been waiting for that signal or if it's a coincidence. It certainly does make better storytelling to say that while well, the bees are all hanging out and they're like, they're watching, is is this hornet going to be a problem or is, is, is he friend or foe? And then as soon as he does something aggressive, they just pile on. That's definitely better storytelling, but I, you know, I don't know if there's any way to verify if it's actually true that they were waiting on that signal. But this is pretty cool what they do next. 
So what they're doing is they're just piling on him. And uh, I thought that they'd be stinging him, and they might be stinging him. But in other videos that I've seen, apparently what it is is this, um, they create a lot of heat, all this movement and, and the fanning that we get like that. And the, the heat gets too high, and that actually shuts the hornet system down and kills it. Um, but it's hard to imagine that they wouldn't also be stinging. Surrounded by vibrating bodies, the hornet at the core of the bee ball begins to overheat. The bees have the advantage, a heat tolerance two degrees above that of their enemy. Uh, interesting. So, so the bees can handle a little bit higher heat, and so that's that's the difference apparently. So they bring it up to a heat that the that the bees can handle, but the hornet can't. And apparently, a two degree difference is enough. It really makes you grateful for all of the sort of like the heat mitigation systems that we have as mammals, especially humans, like the ability to sweat is a big, big deal. And a lot of animals don't have that. At 46 degrees Celsius, the aggressor is roasted alive. Oh, there he is, he's dead, they got him. Yeah, I don't know. It, it is kind of funny. Like, like there's a certain sort of, um, uh, I don't know. I feel like vindicated on on behalf of the bees. But again, it's 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 just a thing. Like these are just insects, and they're kind of doing what what they do. Um, and it's and it's us who've sort of like put this story on it uh, for some reason. But still, it's it's kind of fun to see, and um, it's really interesting to just in general about this idea to go back to the to what we were talking about before this this ability to scream kind of like scream um, that bees have is really interesting the article says that bees are constantly communicating with each other in both good times and in bad but anti-predator signal exchange is particularly important during dire moments when rallying workers for colony defense is imperative this research shows how amazing complex signals produced by asian hive bees can be we feel like we have only grazed the surface of understanding their communication. There's a lot more to be learned. So the implication is that there's there's a lot more that the hunt that these Japanese honeybees are doing in terms of communicating with one another, which is just really interesting to see. This kind of, um, you know, it's still a mystery in in a lot of ways how these communal insects like ants and bees, how it is that they function so well together um, without the without the aid of of higher intellect, essentially with um, with, with these highly developed brains that humans have and, and even primates and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and like and subscribe, and I hope you'll join me again in the future soon. Bye.